the most direct, and in a sense the most important, problem which our conscious knowledge of nature should enable us to solve is the anticipation of future events, so that we may arrange our present affairs in accordance with such anticipation. For the moment I am blundering without precise method. I repeat old experiments in this field and demonstrate others which pass through my head. I hope that, among the hundred remarkable phenomena which I come across, some light will shine from one or another. One cannot escape the feeling that these mathematical formulas have an independent existence and an intelligence of their own, that they are wiser than we are, wiser even than their discoverers, that we get more out of them than was originally put into them. Outside our consciousness there lies the cold and alien world of actual things. Between the two stretches the narrow borderland of the senses. No communication between the two worlds is possible excepting across the narrow strip. For a proper understanding of ourselves and of the world, it is of the highest importance that this borderland should be thoroughly explored. From the outset Maxwell's theory excelled all others in elegance and in the abundance of the relations between the various phenomena which it included. Experience is the collecting of what is similar in different particular perceptions. The rigor of science requires that we distinguish well the undraped figure of nature itself from the gay-colored vesture with which we clothe her at our pleasure. I grow increasingly aware, and in more ways than expected that I am at the center of my own field, and whether it be folly or wisdom, it is a very pleasant feeling. All physicists agree that the problem of physics consists in tracing the phenomena of nature back to the simple laws of mechanics. Sometimes I really regret that I did not live in those times when there was still so much that was new, to be sure enough much is yet unknown. But I do not think that it will be possible to discover anything easily nowadays that would lead us to revise our entire outlook as radically as was possible in the days when telescopes and microscopes were still new. To get information for myself and for others direct from nature gives me so much more satisfaction than to be always learning it from others and for myself alone. We cannot a priori demand from nature simplicity, nor can we judge what in her opinion is simple. I have never forgotten what I often used to say to myself, that I would rather be a great scientific investigator than a great engineer, but would rather be a second-rate engineer than a second-rate investigator. To this question, what is Maxwell's theory? I cannot give any clearer or briefer answer than the following, Maxwell's theory is the system of Maxwell's equations. Arithmetical symbols are written diagrams and geometrical figures are graphic formulas.
I do not think that the radio waves I have discovered will have any practical application. The rigor of science requires that we distinguish well the undraped figure of nature itself from the gay-colored vesture with which we clothe it at our pleasure. That which is gained from experience can again be annulled by experience. Born February 22nd, 1857. Died January 1st, 1894, aged 36. Bio. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz was a German physicist who first conclusively proved the existence of electromagnetic waves theorized by James Clerk Maxwell's electromagnetic theory of light. Heinrich Hertz was a German scientist and physicist who became the first scientist to prove that electromagnetic waves did indeed have an existence and in so doing he proved what had only been a theory first put forwards by the Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell. His theories went on to be developed into what later came to be known as radio waves, however. It is also important to point out that another huge conclusion from his research on electromagnetic waves was that he was also able to prove that both light and heat are different forms of electromagnetic radiations. Other than being a gifted exponent of the sciences from an early age, Hertz was also a linguist who excelled in learning new languages, and it is not a surprise that he was trained in languages like Sanskrit and Arabic which were rarely learnt by students at the time. Last, but not the least, Hertz might have had a relatively short career compared to other scientists of the era, but there is absolutely no denying the fact that he achieved a lot in his short career. That many others would have been proud of and needless to say he has left behind a rich body of work that would be studied in universities for years.